23rd, June 18th, will now come to order. First item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Is there, does anybody have any comments or corrections? Move we accept the minutes from the May 21st, 2019 meeting as submitted. Second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the uh, AT&T 11, 11 Avon Road Site Plan Amendment. AT&T is requesting site plan amendments to 11 Avon Road to install antennas on the water tower and ground support equipment uh, in reference to section 199 site plan completeness. So this is a hearing for completeness. Um, and just before we start, I want to ask Maureen something that goes to the very heart of completeness here, which is uh, one of the emails we received mentioned that uh, this is a uh, non-conforming site and the zoning does not support this use in any manner. And it seems to me if that's true or if they need a zoning variance, we would not even be able to be here looking at this. So I wonder if you could comment on that and enlighten us. Sure, so the site already has uh, antennas installed by Verizon and prior to the planning board granting approval for those antennas, there was a significant amount of litigation regarding a zoning board of appeals um, decision and that whole issue of whether or not this is an alternative tower structure was already litigated. So it doesn't have have to meet the minimum lot size for a new commercial tower because it's not being reviewed as a new commercial tower. It's being treated as an alternative tower structure. And so I would advise the planning board that issues regarding the non-conformance of the lot have already been decided and that you are now looking at adding antennas to a site that's already been approved for um, telecommunication equipment. You say it's been litigated, what does that mean? That means that the, uh, there was a decision by the zoning board, that decision was appealed, it went to court, it was remanded, it was adjudicated by the, Supreme, the, the zoning board again, it went back to court again. Um, so the whole issue of whether or not uh, telecommunication equipment can be allowed on this site has already been decided. Didn't that go to federal court? I don't, you know, the, that was one of those court cases that was regarding the zoning board rather than the planning board, so I'm not as familiar with it, and I'm happy that I'm not as familiar with it, but um, if you want, I can I can get you the, the uh, I mean, there were multiple decisions, and it went before the zoning board multiple times. The bottom line is that the town lost and forced the issue of it coming in before the planning board, the Verizon site. Yeah, if, if there is a question regarding um, a lot size or compliance with the zoning dimensional standards, that needs to be addressed before someone can apply for planning board site plan review. So the fact that it's gotten here, it's already been addressed. Um, it was addressed before the Verizon antennas were approved and the code officer should have not referred it back to the planning board for the, for the AT&T antennas if there were still outstanding issues. So I would say it's already been addressed. Thank you. Okay, okay so you can introduce yourselves and proceed. Sure, my name is Ted Small. I'm counsel for the applicant and I'm here with Kristen LeDuke who's a representative of AT&T. I think I just want to start off with a brief introduction to the project and then address uh, a few of the issues that there were questions about completeness and, and then take it from there if that's okay with you folks. Um, this is, as you all know, a, a project intended uh, or a project in which AT&T is looking to add new antennas to an existing water tower that already has uh, wireless antennas that serve Verizon. So this is essentially, uh, AT&T is essentially looking to be treated the same as Verizon was in the sense that looking to have equal access uh, to a site that will provide cellular service. 
Uh, on top of that, the service that will be provided by AT&T will close communication gaps in Cape Elizabeth. Um, I don't mean that to convey the message that it will close all cellular gaps in Cape Elizabeth, but it will close some gaps in coverage, and we can provide more detail about that tonight as you see fit. Uh, in addition to sort of consumer service that would be provided by this project, this project would also uh, be part of AT&T's first net network, which is a, a project intended, uh, AT&T's got the exclusive contract to construct the first net infrastructure in the country. FirstNet is set up uh, basically in response to 9-11 when there were problems with communications between first responders. And this is an attempt to address those problems. What would happen if in the event of an emergency, uh, the, the antennas being provided, if installed by AT&T for this project, would provide exclusive service to first responders. It would basically shut down the consumer aspect uh, on, on that particular uh, antenna and provide first responders with their own network that they could communicate with each other. So uh, not only is this project going to close gaps for con consumers, it's going to provide an exclusive uh, safety net, if you will, for first responders in the event of an emergency. The, uh, the project itself will not change the existing property much at all. There will be a small new pad installed uh, that would be 18, 8 by 17 feet, 8 feet by 17 feet in size. Um, that would add very little bit, uh, very little to uh, erosion control issues. We have in a packet that has been provided this afternoon, provided new information on erosion control measures that will be implemented. Uh, there were a couple of other issues that were uh, flagged as potentially uh, not complete. I'll just walk through them. One was erosion control. Again, we've provided more detail on that. I can provide you a citation in the new materials if needed. Um, Lighting was an issue that was addressed. The lighting for the project has been removed. There was originally, the plan was there was going to be one small light that would only come on at certain points in time. That has been taken out of the project, so there's uh, no need to further address the lighting issues. Um, noise, we have provided some additional detail on that. We have an engineer that's done some studies to determine what the sound level would be with the existing uh, generator that's planned to be used. AT&T is proposing to install a fence and some sound attenuation blankets that will control the sound. Uh, the engineer has pledged to work further with us and you folks to ensure that any sound from the generators uh, would meet all thresholds as required by the ordinance. Um, but just a little further detail on that. The generator in question here would only come into play when there's a loss of power for a considerable period of time. If there's a loss of power, what happens is batteries serving the project would supply power for six to eight hours. It's only after that power would be diminished that a generator would kick on and then the generator would only be on for the purposes of recharging the batteries. Once the batteries are recharged, the generator would kick off again. So as it stands now, we believe that the, the generator, uh, it's either meeting or is close to meeting the requirements. Um, again, we're, we have an engineer who will do whatever is necessary to further reduce it. Um, but just one further point on that, because the generator will only be coming on when there's a power outage or other emergency, um, it would also seem to us that at such a time there would be other generators in the area that would kick on. And our view of it is that if you're measuring the noise level created by the generator at this project, it's against the background noise, background noise levels. And those noise levels are going to be higher with other generators in the area kicking up. So we believe that the generator does and will meet the threshold requirements. Um, 
financial and technical capability, I believe uh, as recently as today, yesterday, um, we got, there was confirmation provided to the town planner that AT&T meets the financial and te technical capabilities for the project. Um, so I believe with that, I've addressed all of the issues where there was a question about completeness. Uh, does anyone have any questions about those issues? Should we provide the, the packets of the new information that were provided to you earlier, Maureen? The, the applicant, uh, excuse me, the planning board does not have those. So right, should we provide the, those? Those are the packages that have the additional erosion information yes. and the fact that there's no lighting and the letter on the um, noise. Correct. Then I would think the planning board would want those. Sure. Sure, all right, we'll pass those out. We, there's John, one, question, one question I had on completeness. Um, was there a, a, a coverage map that's gonna show the improved service that was given to us? Yes. It yes. was, you know. Okay, I saw that and you, I when you say decipher it. It didn't look like there was any difference between page two and three. When you say coverage, you mean of the service? Yes, yes. The, the improvements. To the chair. Yep. I think the third page shows additional coverage and they just didn't update the, the title of the third page. Okay. Right. So the third page shows a lot more green. Okay, and but it doesn't really hit the, all right. I guess I'll ask a question on that. We, uh, and we do have someone here who can provide more information about that from a technical aspect. Uh, I understand the maps may be a little bit difficult to decipher, um, but I do think as we can show, they do show that the addition of this project will close some gaps. Um, and we'll get it blown up for you so we can point it out in no, some I, detail. Thank you. Just on, with regard, I don't need it blown up. Um, yeah. But, it, so if I'm reading this map correctly, it does look like there's improved service north of where the tower would go in, but not much going south into what, we sort of call the two lights area. I know you're not from here, but. Um, I know the two lights area. Okay, yeah. yeah. But is that is that accurate? Am I reading that correctly? Yeah, I believe you are. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, does anybody else have questions on completeness? Okay, well then, um, did, did you want to make a statement as well? Yeah, we're okay. just dealing with completeness at this point. I think. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, we're now going to open the hearing to uh, public here, uh, public comment. And uh, is there anybody here who wishes to comment on the issue of completeness of the application? All right, seeing none, we'll close the hearing to public comment and open uh, the board for discussion. Peter. This is a, uh, I guess just a question, and that is this, uh, the new antennas will be serving existing wireless communications facilities of one type or another. Does this new facility have offer any service to the new 5G uh, communications developments that are coming at us down the road? My name is Sohail Usmani. I'm the RF engineer for this project. S O H A I L U S M A N I. Radio frequency engineer. So Sohail needs to design all of these good things. Could you come to the microphone, please? Sohail designs all of the. Um, the antennas um, for the coverage and the 5G and the first net that will be included in this um, site. 
Yeah, my question right at the moment is only about completeness. So if you could just contribute any information as to your submission and how it might be uh, available to these uh, other technologies that are coming. So what I'm not clear on the question is it is it going to be 5G capable? Yeah, is it essentially is it 5 is it are we looking at only serving existing technologies on your submission or is it 5G capable or adaptable? When, when 5G will become available then yes this hardware should support 5G service. Thank you. Okay. Did, were you involved in the sound calculations? Um, I have a question. Okay. This is of Maureen. It's regarding the sound issue. Um, we are provided just now with this sound engineer's study. Um, my question is, this enough to get them through completion? You've listed it as partial. This sort of says it's, it's very hand wavy, to be honest, um, kind of loose saying that they will work with them to do that. Um, does that meet completion standards to say we will work with them to do that and not say basically we will, you know, the, what the actual method of getting there is? So there, there are two things that the board has to make a determination on, whether or not an application is complete and then whether or not standards are met. Mm -hmm. And that's your call. Um, completeness is always the issue of was enough information submitted to begin the review. And completeness does not, if you deemed complete on an item, that doesn't mean automatically that you're going to meet the standard. So you could find tonight that enough information has been provided to, to begin the discussion. You could deem it complete and still find that you're not satisfied at this point that standards have been met. Or you could determine that you're just not even close to being complete. Or you could determine that it looks like it's complete and you're fairly comfortable. They've demonstrated compliance with the standards. So that, that is the planning board's job to do that. Does that help? Okay. Jim? Um, one, I thought we had a local, or, local noise ordinance. We don't? We have um, standards regarding noise in the site plan regulations. And um, anticipating that that might be an issue, uh, the standards are on page 274 for anyone who has their ordinance in front of them. Um, and it talks about the maximum permissible A-weighted decibel level of a continuous, regular, or frequent or intermittent source of sound produced by unique activities, structures, or equipment on the site shall be limited by the time period and by the budding land use as listed below. And so uh, this is a residential zone, and from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., the maximum decibel level as measured at the property line is not supposed to exceed 55 decibels. From 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., the maximum decibel as measured at the property line is not uh, allowed to exceed 45 decibels. But I, I did bring this up when the planning board was reviewing the uh, Verizon antennas and the associated in, uh, generator for Verizon, that it does say a sound produced by unique activities, structures, or equipment on the site. So I'm not recommending the board do this, but I do think you could look at the um, the idea that the generator is something that's only going to be used in an emergency situation, and in, in that situation, there's going to be other generators going off in the neighborhood. That doesn't mean that you still shouldn't hold each generator to the 55 and the 45 decibel. You already have one generator on the site that is, has demonstrated, I believe, to your satisfaction that it can meet the standard. And then the question is, when you have multiple generators running at the same time, 
one, what is the likelihood you're going to have both of them running at the same time when this one is batteries for six to eight hours? Um, and then does it need to meet this or is that not unique? I'm wrestling with this because I've had to do sound calculations before. Um, I saw your email, but only about a half hour ago about that. And that is correct since it's on a logarithmic scale. And uh, I'll try not to put everybody to sleep on this, but they're not directly additive. So if you've got two generators at the same sound level, that doesn't mean it's going to be twice as loud, and it's not. It's going to be less than that. And I'm accustomed to seeing the data provided in octave bands and frequencies, not just one number. So I'm wrestling with this as far as completeness. You could cherry pick a certain octave band and pick out that decibel level because it's less than what's required, but that doesn't mean, like I said, it gets into the weeds. So I'm wrestling with the completeness part on that. Carol Ann. I'd like to suggest that um, I don't disagree with what Jim's saying because I don't necessarily understand every bit of it. <laughs> but um, that is getting into the nitty-gritty that can be addressed after we act on completeness. It's something we can say... But it, I guess I was getting, was it complete? Do we have enough data to be... Do we have enough information to move this forward? Do we like all the information? Maybe we do and maybe we don't. And if we don't, we tell them, before you come back to us again, we need you to, to present this in a way that is more clear to everybody. Yeah, I agree um, with Karen, so with you. And that's what I'm suggesting, is we move with completeness and then get into, is it 5G, is it the, you know, all that and detail. They've indicated they have an acoustical engineer on board, and so it sounds like they're prepared to go forward and pr provide this information. Uh, uh, a real quick question. What about testing? Um, and usually, you know, generators are tested um, sometimes weekly, sometimes monthly. It depends on the site. I know the telephone companies do that and some other companies. No, it's, typically you, it's typically tested monthly, um, and they will coordinate with Verizon to be on their test schedule if that I, helps, you know, mitigate any yeah. additional noise, you know, okay. with, you know, reoccurrence of okay. it. Okay. And then one other question about noise. I know that the, um, the hut has an air conditioning unit. So when that kicks on, usually there's a condenser that's involved with that. And so there's, there's going to be some noise additive to the generator. And that could, that could be operating, you know, during the summertime when it's, when it's, you know, humid and hot and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So will the acoustical engineer take that into account? I, we can definitely ask him that as okay. well. Okay. Um, Thank you. Most certainly. Thanks. Okay, okay any other? Uh, my understanding is the engineer is willing to take everything into consideration yeah. Yeah. and do whatever we need to do yeah. to make it work. No, we can. Yeah. Thank you. All right, any other questions? I would love a motion. <laughs> and then we can get into much more fun. If I can find it. Here it is. Motion for completeness. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of AT&T to install antennas on the water tower located at 11 Avon Road be deemed complete. Uh, second. I'll second. Jim? All in favor? It's unanimous. Okay, so moving on. So I, I guess there's a clear directive from at least two of our board members that we want more detail on noise, on all noise, all things that generate noise for the next meeting. Does anyone have questions or comments on anything other than noise? I have, yeah. John. Well, it's related to noise, um, but it's not the same request with regards to the testing. Um, have you maximized the noise buffers uh, that you could put within or around the generator? 
from I know there were blankets that were mentioned. There's a stockade fence that was mentioned. Correct. Is there anything more that you could do or they you could provide? They will look at more, um, but without having the generator actually on site, there it's kind of them estimating what okay. needs to be done. Um, but they will ultimately do what it needs to be to bring it down to the threshold, whether it's you know planting um, additional shrubs or you know another sound blanketing um, on the gate or however, you know, it even they brought up even positioning it in such a way that it, it you know, minimizes it more. Okay. And that would just be my suggestion that there be some showing that you're, you're taking that action. Mm -hmm. um, because I remember when Verizon was here and we talked about this issue with noise and that we realized that they probably weren't going to be the only game in town mm -hmm. at the end of the day, um, that this is sort of like having a party. And if you have three guests, they might not make an all out of noise, but if it gets up to 10 or 20 or 50, or 50 mm -hmm. then it's going to get a lot more noisy and you're going to get a lot more complaints. And at the end of the day, if the code enforcement comes and says it's too noisy, then you're all going to get shut down. Right. And so just, I just say mm -hmm. tread lightly and keep that in the consideration, even though you might be compliant, you got to remember that Verizon's there already and there might be another person that comes along or another company that comes along too. So Correct. just consider it and please max out as much as you can. Will do. Thanks. Okay, Peter. Uh, Maureen, help me remember on Verizon, did we not require that they put a roof on the uh, generator enclosure? I, I would have to go back and check. I know you did require a wood fence and there were sound dampening and blankets. Baffling, and I, I think they and didn't I, plan to do I a roof. Thought I thought we had we... more of an ice shield than a roof, but I would have to check. Okay. But that was, I think, another noise dampening device, which my memory tells me we talked about. I think they did something along that line. So I, I assume that uh, the board would probably be wanting an equivalence, at least, of the structure uh, for the previous applicant. Jim. I guess, yeah, you said other than noise, but yeah, it's kind of related to noise. Okay. Um, based on experience, and looking at the planes, you already got a box around it, right? Insulated box. It's pretty much all you can do for a generator. Most of the noise comes out the exhaust pipe just like in a car. So if wherever that pipe is pointed, that's where the noise is gonna go. Regardless if you got a box around the, the generator itself. Um, so one of the things I've done, you know, I, I'll probably mention that when we're there during the site walk, point it up and, and angle the pipe so you don't get rain in there. It help keep the sound down. But uh, that's going off on a tangent. Would it be possible to find out when what schedule Verizon has their generator running to exercise it, to time it around our site walk? I don't know. I have no idea who to ask about that. I'm sure you don't either. I, you know. Unfortunately, I can look into it. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's on the schedule of your lease that you have. Horizon or yeah, I, it'd be nice if we could actually see, hear the thing running. Mm -hmm. I know, obviously, it's not yours. You have no control over it. I understand. It's just more of a qualitative thing. Peter. Yeah, just to add one person's opinion here, um, I don't know the noise output of your generator versus the standard home generator that you find scattered throughout the neighborhoods. Uh, I must say that these home generators are a, pretty much a fixture of life now. Uh, they go on when the power is out and the noise levels probably exceed the, uh, the decibel uh, limits that we have, but for good reason it keeps things going. And um, I, I do appreciate the context of this generator only going on when it's needed and then only to charge the batteries. And I didn't realize that I thought it would be an ongoing uh, running issue, so I personally do not find myself too uh, concerned if the generator generates in the area of a home generator's level of noise, because that is really part of our daily life, just like snowblowers and lawnmowers and other things that you know kind of happen. So in terms of, of risk and uh, danger to the neighborhood in a isolated like location like this one, somewhat isolated, uh, it, to me it is not a, uh, doesn't sound like a massive uh, risk. 
I just wanted to throw that out there. And yeah, keep in mind that the standard is for the decibel level at the property it's line. It's a boundary, right? And uh, you're quite a distance from your property lines. I think the, so. the closest to the butter is 200 feet, I believe. So that's yeah. quite a bit more than the house next door's generator cranking on. Maureen. I, I would like to make a request, though, and I, I understand that you talked about the distance from other properties, but the standard in the ordinance is from your property line. So um, while it may be, you may want to include that information of how far away you are from actual other homes, right. I think it's really important that whatever you provide talks about the decibel level at your property line. Yeah, you're only 43 feet, 28 feet realistically, not 200. So, you know, I wouldn't keep saying that because it's very obvious in your plan. Um, I actually had a comment on the plan. Um, this is just a very minor detail, but uh, last I knew, neither Bangor Hydro nor Fairport <laughs> Communications still existed, nor were they probably your uh, customer. You were probably not a customer of theirs, given that we are in CMP land and Bangor doesn't actually exist any longer. I think they're Amera, right? What page are you on? They're, oh, page one. Sorry, T1. It lists who your power company and fiber company were. It's probably lifted off an old plan, I imagine, mm -hmm. but might as well be correct. I didn't hear your question. They, they're listing incorrectly, I assume. He wants oh. the references updated. Yeah, I mean, it should be correct if it's going to be submitted. Oops. Carolyn? I have, I have a question that's not related to noise. Um, you're removing a light. Uh, what, how is that going to work for a technician? What, what's the plan if there's no lighting on the little structure? Uh, they'll be instructed to always, they do have um, flashlights with them as part of their toolkit. Um, it will be noted in their, their access um, their access code, we call it, you know, whether it's a combination lock or whatever that they need to bring, whether it's a ladder to get to, um, that will be included to, you know, always have a flashlight. So to access. that's not uncommon? No, okay. not at all. Dan? Yeah, I, I've got just uh, two quick um, non-noise uh, questions on the drawings. Um, the fiber run on drawing E1, it's just noted as being to be determined because are, are you guys going to be excavating to connect new fiber into the, the hut and then, you know, make all those connections? And if it's to be determined, and, you know, what is that length? Or is that something that, you know, your team is still going to be working on? The fiber, um, they've looked at it. Um, it will come off the closest pole and then they... They call it a transport walk is when they determine it, um, but they will follow the existing um, fiber route um, that is either trenched it's or trenched. Above. Yeah, so it will follow that. Okay, okay. And then um, on drawing G1, there's a grounding plan that shows grounding outside of the, the fence structure. So that's gonna, that's buried. Isn't that a buried grounding? You got grounding rods and... Yep. And so that's going to be part of the construction project. And then if there's going to be some type of landscaping that goes in after, I'm assuming. Correct. Okay. All right. Okay, since we do have the RF engineers here, is there anyone who wants to dig a little deeper into the coverage map? I couldn't quite follow it if I'm assuming I'm looking at the right one. So the last page is the expanded, and you can see there's more green.
they're not numbered. Yeah, in this, this two maps, um, this one, that the blue uh, star represents the location of the water tank for the proposed site. Yeah. And if I let's go back to in the other map, yeah. and you know, you have the two pages that um, the addition of the green and some orange color in that second map is the coverage that the water tank will be provided. Um, the gentleman, um, I think John asked the question um, going to the south. There is a terrain map that you might have um, now. I don't know that I'm going to the two lights um, area. And there's, you know, uh, ups and downs on that road. And that terrain map explains, you know, um, mind you, uh, this, these coverage maps are like minus 83 and minus 93. That doesn't mean that the cell phone doesn't work after that. But Can you just tell us what that means? I, I, I'm not too familiar with the... Uh... Minus 83 DBN is the coverage you would expect when you're inside a building. So you should be able to make, you know, you should be able to use your phone or voice data. Right um, minus 93 is when you're inside a vehicle, you know, coming on the road. Um, that is supposed to be reliable coverage. They call it in the standard of wireless. Um, and beyond that, it doesn't mean that you don't, you know, it's, it's a drop, drop dead. You know, it's, it's RF, it's wireless. Uh, you, you probably, you may get... shown because as per standard we you know the wireless carriers don't buy reliable coverage so it's not shown. So is this a model? This is a model, yes. right? It's a model. Yes. Okay. It's a prediction model. Right. Okay. All right. Joe. So that was a good observation. Yeah. Jonathan. So when you say the, the area that's in the white it says below threshold um, does that mean that there's no coverage or there's just not quote unquote reliable coverage? It's not reliable. All right. Although it's not reliable, would it be upgraded from what it now exists, even in that white area? Can you predict that one at all? Um, based on the, the height that's available on the water tank and the terrain around, especially to the south, Um, yeah. So, blue, um, these are the crescent cows that I was talking about. So these areas are dips in the in the terrain, and then the darker colors are where it tends to rise. Right. Um, so according to this terrain map. So these are the dips. Um, and then as you travel along with seven, then you go up and down. On those, and that's where you, you know, based on the the low rats and the height of the water tank and the the tree height around the water tank, it prevents the coverage from getting to those, um, which creates sort of a valley. No, I understand that, and we do appreciate that the difficulties that the, that the terrain imposes to the south of the tower. But my question is. Would the addition of your antennas, even though it wouldn't raise the coverage south of the tower to a reliable level, do you believe it would improve the coverage that is in that southern area? With this um, site, the reliable coverage is, is shown here, and it is pretty accurate with respect to the uh, prediction model. So it would not improve it to the south? Where it remains white, you're saying it would not improve it, even though it didn't raise it to a level of reliability. Uh, no. okay. Anything else on RF coverage? Well, I just want to make one comment on that. Um, 
when the Verizon came in, there was made a representation that it was in, going to improve a lot of service in the Broad Cove area. And I'm um, not sure if that service ever came to fruition, but at least we're getting a uh, more accurate, I guess, uh, a depiction of the service down in that area. But it does show from the map coverage that north of there, it seems like there's going to be a vast improvement in the old Ocean House area. Right. Um, so. Yeah. I appreciate the representation. Okay, does anybody have any comments or questions about the photo simulations that were handed out? I just want to say I'm sorry for it being foggy that day. Um, <laughs> and I don't mean to, I don't know if I'm belaboring the point, but is it possible to do one on a sunny day just to, See if um, I don't know. If nobody else cares, then I don't want to make them go out and do it. But I did just make that observation that unfortunately it wasn't on a sunny day. Short supply <laughs> they have. Is that something that the board would like to see? If nobody else wants it, then I'm okay. I mean, it's a water tower with more antennas on it. Yeah. I'm good with it as is. Okay. All right. I so guess I, the coverage, I guess I would have expected more improvement in the coverage area. It all seems to be to the north. It is what it is, I guess, but I would have expected more. I, I guess the cost justifies it, but I don't know. I'm not sure I'm making a good point, but I just would have expected more. Okay, so we're gonna have. I'd, I'd like to have on. a further request of uh, one of the abutters. I, I would like to have a sidewalk. Yeah. Yes. So to kind of beat the dead horse on this whole coverage issue, <laughs> is is the inability to improve the coverage to the south just due to topography, or is it also a consequence of how you've chosen to place your antennas on the water tower? Uh, you have to go over to. It is. It is uh, due to the the height on the water tank, and we're at the highest point. Um, at least the prediction that we ran, and also due to the fact that the terrain uh, dips and, and rises. Thank you. Can I ask one related question? Um, what is the height of the water? I'm sure it's in the materials, but what is the height of the water tower that you'll be putting it up at? The height that we're the center line of the antennas is 75 feet. 75 feet. So and the water tank top is 80 feet. And usually cell towers are 180 feet? It varies, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Try to go as high as we Right. Um, so if the water tower was higher, then the coverage would most likely be better? Then, then we can play around with the, you know, down tilting the antennas when we're higher up. Imagine a torch, you know, if the torch is shining that way and you just do it that, you can get it to exactly where you Gotcha. Thank you. All right. So, no more questions. Let's yeah figure out a time for site walk. We want to do this soon. I take it. Make a motion that Maureen cancels her vacation. <laughs> Fails for lack of a second. <laughs> Can I put that in the minutes? <laughs> All right, so. You can do it this week? 
this week, um, yeah, Wednesday or Friday morning early. Friday morning early. <coughs> this Friday? This coming Friday, yeah. 21. Thank you. Friday's better, for, morning's better for me. I can't do Friday. Nor can I. Okay. Is there an after work time that works for everyone? I'm on vacation too. Although, how can you be on vacation when you're retired? Tom is tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> can we schedule tomorrow afternoon, or is that not enough time for noticing? Um, I think you can do it. I, I mean, can't do tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Can you do any time after work this week? I could do Thursday after. Probably like five or so. And, and so can I. I can't do tomorrow either. I could do Thursday. Thursday yeah. would work. I cannot. I can't do Thursday. Tomorrow I could. Thursday I'm on a plane. Thursday, like the day after tomorrow, I can't do. Okay. okay. What about next? Are you next week? What's people's availability? I'm back. How's you Tuesday? Back? Tuesday the 25th? I just throw it in. How about next Monday, 24th? Monday the 24th. Early? <laughs> What's early? early. <laughs> early. I start I'd work rather, at 7.30. Yeah, yeah, I'd rather do in the afternoon on Monday if that works. Or That's Monday fine with me. 5, 5.30? Monday, yeah. 5.30? Is that something the applicant can do? <laughs> Absolutely. We'll make arrangements to be here. Whatever's convenient for you. So, so Monday at 5? Monday at 5. 30. 5.30. <laughs> okay. So that's Monday, June 24th? Yep. I'll bring the bug spray. <laughs> okay, everybody knows where it is. Um, mm. Great. So Not we really. need a motion to table. Just going to put the on the to the uh, motion for public hearing. Uh, be it ordered that the application for AT&T to install antennas on the water tower located at 11 <coughs> Yvonne Road be tabled to the July 16, 2019 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. All right. Um, other business is uh, public comment. Does anybody wish to make a public comment? Okay, seeing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? <laughs> All opposed? It's unanimous.